Welcome back to the Fortitude Podcast. Uh, we are here in the midst of, of prepping for winter time as the, the temperature drops. And uh, we want to kind of talk about things that are going on in our schools while we're here. Yeah. Um, but it's cold. Very. It's yeah. very cold. Yeah. Like the, the temperature, the thermometer, I think, lost the, the ability to keep that, whatever that red stuff is that's in there. Like it's just leaking out the bottom of mine. That's not good. I believe that's called mercury. Yeah. Oh, ooh, that's there's some kind of poisoning thing. There is. You there. don't you don't want to touch that. Oh, okay. you know what I'm most excited about? It being cold. What's that? Stink bugs are dying. Ooh, see, that's about time. And the mosquitoes obviously have gone away. Yeah, you know, mosquitoes aren't so bad. It's the stink yeah, bugs. It's the stink bugs. It's okay. like an infestation in everybody's uh, house. Mm-hmm. Uh, I started killing them with my blowtorch. Nice. Uh, until I burnt the curtains in my kitchen. But that's another story. So that's a future podcast. Mm-hmm. On this podcast, we're going to talk about activities. And specifically, we have Tim Grimes here to talk about East High activities. How's it going, bud? Going well. How are you guys doing? Fantastic. Um, where do we want to start? We've got all kinds of fun things coming up in the winter. Basketball is probably the biggest one. How's that looking? Well, practice started on, on Monday for us and you know every other school in the state of Missouri. Uh, as we kick things off and yeah it's 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 looking good on both our our boys and our and our girls side you know we're excited about um, the prospects for each of those teams Uh, first on our girls side last year we had our best season ever Uh, we won 17 games went I believe 17 and 9 and have a lot of those pieces back actually from last year's team Uh, the player of the year from last year is back her name is Liz Behan she's a senior this year and we're looking for more big things out of her uh, in her in her final year. Um, other girls that are back from that 17 and 9 team from a year ago, uh, we have Jalen Head, who's going to be going into her third year as a starter. She's a junior. Um, other girls that look to contribute for us are Maya Wobling, although she's injured, she'll be back probably in January. Uh, Kiara Johnston, uh, Yasmin Edmondson. There's a couple other girls that we're looking for uh, for big contributions to the team that. Um, Got varsity experience last year, and I mean, we're looking for, for big things out of our girls and hope to contend uh, for, for a conference championship there on that girls' side. Uh, Zumal Norse, they are, they're the, the reigning conference champs, and they're going to be pretty strong again this year, but we're hoping to be able to compete with them and, and see what happens. But we're excited about our girls. And on the boys' side, um, you know, it was a, a very solid team a year ago, and we've got quite a few boys that are back. Uh, only one senior back this year. Uh, Jude Highfill uh, is back, uh, but we have a very strong junior class. Uh, a lot of kids there that made contributions last year as sophomores on the varsity. Uh, Maury Johnson, C.J. Woodard, Jacob York, and Xavier Jackson are, are kind of names to to look for on our boys' team. And, and again, the, the conference, the GAC Central, is always very, very competitive. Uh, you know, Zumal South has traditionally been the the leader of that pack, and they're going to be very good again. I know Zumalt North is is really strong, um, certainly on paper, and 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 might even be the favorite this year. And but again, we hope to to compete and give those teams and others, you know, a, a run for their money each night out. So um, both sides, both both genders in basketball, we're excited about. It should be a fun winter to, to come out and watch some East High basketball. What do you want to learn more about, Juan? wrestling yeah you know, you know I, that w- I was always torn well I wouldn't really torn because I watched the wrestlers practice uh in high school and I knew I wanted nothing of that <laughs> uh but seeing you know how it develops athletes who you know when they play multiple sports mm-hmm. and they also wrestle you know how they develop and now we have girls wrestling as yeah, well yeah. so uh what's wrestling looking like for east you know, number-wise, I was, in fact, in the room yesterday talking to our coaches, and and they're telling me it's hard to run practice. We have so many right now. Uh, we have about 60 kids out, which is the most we've ever had. Wow. Um, about 12 of those are girls right now that are out, which is awesome. Uh, we Last year we started off with four, and then through some injuries, I think we ended up with one or two at the end of the season. <laughs> um but yeah, we're at, we're at about 12 girls and about 60 total kids, and so it's exciting to see, um, you know, what we've got in store uh, for the for that program. Uh, we've got some some good kids back uh, from last year's team on the boys' side: uh, Braden Stark, Joe Beck, Lucas Eaton, Dylan McCoy, 
Uh, we're all strong force last year, and they're back again, and, and we look for big things from those kids. Uh, Brittany Zentino on the girls' side, she was a GAC champion last year, and so she's back for us. And, and again, hope to get some, some additional girls uh, achieve high at the GAC meet later on in January. So, you know, excited about, about what the wrestling program, uh, especially those numbers, again, that, that's a great, a great thing. And you're right, you are correct, Juan, that that sport can really develop kids that are in other sports and, and make them just better athletes and certainly <laughs> learn how to compete and work hard and be disciplined and all those things that are, that are important across the board. So, again, look, excited about our wrestling program. What about over on the performing arts side? I mean, I know we've got concerts coming up. Um, I'm sure there's some good, exciting ones there. Yeah, uh, December's a busy month for us on, on the concert side. Uh, our band, our orchestra, and our choir, uh, they're all going to be um, putting on concerts uh, for, for the public in December. And I can give you those dates. On the 12th, our choir concert. Uh, our choir will have a concert on the 12th at the auditorium and then followed by our orchestra on the 17th of December. And then our band on the 18th of December. So multiple opportunities to, to come out and see our kids um, in the performing arts areas. Our orchestra is also going to be involved in the uh, City of St. Peter's tree lighting ceremony. That's going to be on December 6th at 6.30 p.m. over there at the uh, St. Peter's City Hall. So that's always a fun event um, to kind of get the Christmas season kicked off there for the city. Um, our theater department actually just recently finished their fall production of The Diviners, but they're already making plans for their musical, which will take place in mid-February, and that's going to be The Wizard of Oz this year, uh, which obviously is a very popular one, and I'm certainly excited to, to see our kids put that on, so that'll be fun as well. What else? Do we have anything else going on in the winter? We do. We have Girls Swim. Uh, it's indoors, so that's good in this cold weather. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to see the logistics. Of, it was just a heated pool or something like that to do it outside. <laughs> yeah, that would, that would be difficult. But, yeah, Girl, Girl Swim actually practice. They, it starts next Monday, so they haven't quite got started yet. The boys' season is still in full swing. Uh, but our girls will kick off next Monday, and, and we've got some strong ladies coming back for, for that program. Uh, some senior names certainly to look out for are Emma Gullison. Rachel Springer and Ashley Turpin. So those are strong swimmers that have been with us since their freshman year and have been very successful. And we have a, a freshman name to kind of keep an eye out for. Her name is Evie Kolb. And our coach, Coach Parks, let me know that she's looking for big things out of her as well as others. And we always have good numbers on the, in, in our girls' swim program also. Um, so, you know, another program that we're excited about. And, and I think winter's going to be uh, – really fun for us over at East High this year. Awesome. Since we're talking about swim, let's talk about those boys. Um, they, they're making some good strides this year. Wow, yeah, our boys' swim team, they, they, they've had a great, great season, and, and that's the one sport for us that is still currently going on. And, and we just had our, our annual GAC meet, and that concluded uh, Wednesday, so just two days ago. And our boys won uh, our school's first ever GAC swim title on Wednesday. And it was really – an incredible performance that, that the boys put on. Um, there are 11 swim events in, in a meet, and we won gold in 10 of the 11. And the one we didn't win gold in, we won silver by like, and we lost by I think five one hundredths of a second. So uh, it was very close. So so our boys just had an incredible meet, and they've had a great season. And just a couple names, we had we had three kids that won four gold medals, and you can only swim in four events total and so they won gold in all four and that's Brendan Hutchinson who's a senior uh, Christian Randall who's a sophomore and Braden Phillips who's a freshman uh, those three boys all won four golds and uh, Matthew Springer and Nick Ostrander and Logan Podorsky they all had multiple medals also so just a tremendous meet and very proud of those kids and our coaches and really really neat for our school to have that kind of success and again first first time so making a little history here at East High. So great job by, by those boys. And state's next week, and many of those kids will be at the state meet at the RecPlex. Then it'll be next Thursday and Friday, December 14th and 15th. So hopefully we can get some medals there also. Awesome. Um, so great job by those, by those swimmers. Always good to have a reason to expand that cabinet for those trophies. And medals, <laughs> right? Right? Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> so you guys had a tough football season. And I know it's easy to focus on the negatives, the, the, the loss column. I think what a lot of people don't focus on are the positives, the things that the kids learned 
from having a very difficult season. What's what's the the positive takeaway that you took away from this year's football season? You know, I just think the compete level, you know, and I know the scores didn't always show that, but I felt like every Friday night, the boys that we had, and, and we didn't have big numbers this year, and then we had some injuries down the stretch, but, but the boys, they competed game in and game out, and it didn't matter who the opponent was. They showed up, and, and, and they left it all on the field. And even in, dis- in, in the score last Friday, you know, we, we lost. The final score was, was not close, but it was, you know, we were within a touchdown late in the second quarter, and then things kind of got away from us, and it, things kind of snowballed. Uh, but the boys, like I said, they competed. They were resilient. They didn't let, you know, the score get them down. Same with our coaches. You know, and each and every week they prepared hard. They practiced hard. And, you know, we're young, and we've got pretty much everybody coming back, and hopefully with a, with a strong offseason in the weight room, and, and hopefully we can kind of get our numbers back up next year. You know, we can, we can rebound. Um, but there's some talent, you know. It's just young, and it's hard to compete. We only had three seniors this year, and, it, you know, it's hard to compete with only three seniors at the varsity level, and it's just it's such a physical sport. But, um, but again, I think just, just resiliency that the boys show. They didn't give up. They kept fighting um, no matter what the score was. Uh, and so I was proud of them for, for that. I think there's so much to look forward to. Like with, with the winter coming up, even though it's going to be cold. I'm looking for those uh, activities inside. Yeah, inside that, definitely. That don't require a coat. Yes. Just the coat to run into the building, right? Just that. And even if I can, like, skip that, <laughs> just run without a coat. Like, going from your car into the recplex, I mean, that's how you get pneumonia. Right. It's, it's crazy. <laughs> Tim, do you have anything else for us? Well, you mentioned that we do have a couple of the, uh, other activities that our kids are involved in that are indoors. Okay. Which uh, is good in this in this cold in these cold temperatures, and that's we have a basically a district wide winter drumline group uh, referred to as Modulation Z or Mod Z yeah. for short. <laughs> and these folks have been at it for several years now, and they're back at it again. And practices rehearsals have kind of just begun. Um, and the, uh, the group is starting to take shape. But this is a group, if you're not familiar, uh, involves really all four of our high schools. Um, probably more East kids than, than some of the other schools, but there are, there are kids from, from North, South, and West that are also represented. And, and, and they put in a lot of time, uh, and they build a new show each and every year, and, and they, have to, they have to get new, new costumes, and they have to get a new kind of a new tarp that illustrates what their or goes along with the theme of, it, of their show. Um, and then they, they, they start competing. Usually it's like late January or early February. So it'll be a while before they actually jump into competitions, but, but they're already starting their, their prep work for that. And, and their season always culminates with the World Championships in Dayton, Ohio, which we actually won that a couple years ago, uh, many of you may recall that are listening to this, um, but Ryan Treasure is our director and he does a tremendous job with that grouping each and every year. And, and kind of along with that, we also have a winter color guard that meets, uh, and similar type of thing. They're starting their practices now, got their, their group formed, and then they'll start competing after the new year also. Uh, and so looking forward to seeing what, what both of those groups have in store. Uh, for us so yeah it's 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 a busy time uh it's always busy uh at high schools and that's that's the that's the great thing about being around a high school there's just so many different things that that our kids can be involved in and that our public can come out and see you know they're just so talented in so many different areas you know sports performance um, type activities um, and also all of our clubs that that, that we have uh, as well so come on out and 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 see a, see a game, see a show, uh, see a concert, just see our kids demonstrate their talent. It's, it's, it's fun to watch. As always, we appreciate you coming in. It's always, it's always fun to hear about what's going on out in schools. I enjoy being here. Appreciate you having me. Absolutely. 
Um, as always, don't forget to subscribe to us on uh, YouTube or your favorite podcast player. Uh, leave some comments for us out there so we know how we're doing. And don't forget we've got that voicemail line that you can leave us some ideas, tips, tricks, anything that you want to tell us about the show. Or really, if you're just bored and need somebody to talk to, uh, leave us a fun message. We'll, we'll make sure we listen to it and maybe make some comments about it. So um, thanks again for listening, and we will see you again next time.